Uh, good afternoon, folks. Uh, I'm here today to talk about a couple of information operations uh, that I've been looking into over the last year, specifically those that are being conducted by domestic actors. Um, so why this talk on internal influence? Um, first, let me caveat by saying that I was in no way paid to do this research. Um, the things that I'll talk about here today are all things that stem from my own research interests. Um, so that said, these domestic operations that I'll talk about uh, demonstrate how unethical actors can operate within ostensibly legal limits uh, to conduct information operations and influence operations. Um, in my opinion, that holds significant ramifications for 2020 elections as those actors uh, and others continue to refine operations beyond the typical bots and memes. Uh, it's also important to note that these operations can exist under the guise of other functions like marketing, PR, or news aggregation, but ultimately some aspect of them is misleading or otherwise manipulating the consumer. So I was originally going to start uh, by talking about Jacob Wall uh, and his operations, but uh, in the interest of time and because his operations really aren't as interesting as those that will follow, I'm gonna be quick. So uh, if you don't know who Wall is, um, it really suffices to say that uh, he conducts smear campaigns, often posing as an intelligence organization that he's created or by convincing others that they're participating in performance art. Um, now, while his operations have largely fizzled, um, I think it's important to note that we can't always rely on reason uh, to win the day. Um, an actor's audience can often supplant that reason, forego that reason, uh, to see what it wants to see. So now on to some more interesting cases, um, starting with Daily Wire's amplifiers. So Daily Wire is a news and opinion, conservative news and opinion site that was founded in 2015 by Ben Shapiro. Um, so a review of Daily Wire's domain assets identifies that their domain was originally registered using who is information consistent with their, for, their parent company, Forward Publishing. Other domains registered by Forward Publishing include therightnews.net. Uh, which was originally registered in 2013 by a different actor, but then updated in early 2016 with who is information consistent with forward publishing. Now, that domain, the rightnews.net, corresponds to a Facebook page called The Right News, which claims to be a media news company and has over 190,000 followers. Reviewing the uh, page transparency in Facebook, uh, there are no specified organizations managing the page. Now where it gets really interesting is looking at the history of the page. When the rightnews.net domain was originally registered in 2013 and this Facebook page originally created, the uh, page posted links to various conservative sites. However, starting in January of 2016 and seemingly corresponding with that change in who is information that we see in the domain, uh, the right news starts to almost exclusively post links to Daily Wire articles. And ultimately, this page is serving as an amplification service for Daily Wire without specifying any relationship thereto. But it gets even better because independently in uh, October of 2019, popular information identified that there were 13 other conservative pages in addition to the right news that uh, were serving to amplify Daily Wire articles. And they were all being done with the same posts. Uh, those pages posted links to Daily Wire over 300 times a week on average. And in September alone, ultimately garnered over 1.2 million engagements um, all while indicating no association to Daily Wire. So now on to uh, Definers and their associated websites. So Definers, uh, which is um, recently rebranded actually to Bullpen Strategy, uh, they are a conservative public, uh, public relations firm closely associated with the America Rising PAC. And uh, they were in the news for their relationship with Facebook and some of their influence operation efforts. 
from a registrant email address and a Google user analytics account, we can identify a number of websites that are associated with definers. And just to give you a perspective of what these have been used for, uh, one of the sites was a fake Tim Cook uh, 2020 campaign site showing no indication of who is behind it. Uh, but a New York Times report would identify that definers created the domain, uh, the site on behalf of uh, Qualcomm, presumably to chill um, relations that Cook had developed with the Trump administration. In another case, uh, we see this college transparency project site that serves up articles and opinion pieces denigrating Yale. Uh, however, there's no information on who is actually behind this so-called project. Another associated organization is Power of the Future, which is a 501c4 nonprofit uh, that claims to be the voice of energy workers. Now, I think it's important to note here that as a 501c4 nonprofit, Power of the Future is not required to disclose its donors or its funding. So to that end, we cannot tell who is actually behind this nonprofit. Notably, Power of the Future's blog, site, and Twitter feed push biased news and opinions on environment and climate-related issues. And several of their projects uh, consist of attempted exposés on environmental organizations. And some of those have even gone so far as to uh, publish the um, names and pictures of uh, members of those organizations. But looking at the bigger picture for these definers associated sites, it really starts to look like this uniform H3O plus molecule where it's really difficult or even impossible to tell where one entity and their actions end and another's begins. Um, and that's really important because it ultimately inhibits uh, the consumer's ability to verify the provenance of what they're looking at and grants the actor or actors um, more freedom to operate without scrutiny. So uh, this last case covers a Trump campaign uh, disinformation site that poses as a news aggregator. Uh, so the Trump campaign uh, purchased this domain, ClintonCain.com, in August of 2016. Originally, it redirected to their main campaign site. However, on October 3rd, the site turns into a drudge-style news aggregator pushing articles and opinion pieces disparaging Clinton and Cain. Now, that October 3rd date is notable as it was the same day that WikiLeaks asked Trump Jr. to push a story alleging Clinton wanted to, wanted to use a drone to target WikiLeaks Assange. On October 5th, or possibly sooner, the Clinton Cain site links to an article on that very story that WikiLeaks had uh, asked about. But that wasn't the only instance where this news aggregator would push WikiLeaks-based stories. Up and through the election, uh, the site would push at least 15 articles and opinion pieces based off of WikiLeaks material. In fact, one of the election day bombshells that the site touted was actually an RT article generally describing a new WikiLeaks release. Uh, but beyond the WikiLeaks-related material, the descriptions of the aggregated articles are often misleading, inaccurate, or unrelated. One headline leads the consumer to believe that Clinton hates Catholics, but instead uh, links to a Fox News opinion piece about Clinton's campaign staff based off of a 2011 email leak. And I'm gonna jump forward here. But, so why does this matter when 2016 was over three years ago? Well, first I would argue that this is not just politicking or electioneering, this is disinformation. Uh, next, as 2020 approaches, this is a perfect example of how political candidates can support, further, and benefit from another entity's active measures campaign. Uh, additionally, publicizing links uh, to pieces based off of links and not to the leaks themselves offers the actor a level of separation from the active measures campaign uh, and an opportunity to wash their hands of it. I've got some closing thoughts there, if you all wanna read them, but that's it, thank you. Thank you.